On a trip like this, you have to expect the unexpected, like a six-hour takeoff delay due to the New Jersey heat wave and the heavy fuel load. This is Hong Kong. No surprise here, very modern and busy. But the reason for my stop here was to leave the hustle and bustle and spend the morning in the city's vast parkland for a quick introduction to mountain biking. Here's my instructor, Steve. After recovering, I took the ferry across from Kowloon to Hong Kong Island, where I tried to walk through as many air-conditioned buildings as possible. I got a look at some of the stuff that finds its way to the U.S. Then I took the tram up to the peak for a view of the city at night. It's a completely Asian experience. The airport in Hong Kong is quite impressive. You can even pick up some wisdom along with your coffee. This is the modern airport that Beijing built for the Olympics. As you walk in, your temperature is taken. Once you're inside, they take their drinking water safety pretty seriously, too. Ulaanbaatar, the capital and home to about half of Mongolia's people, is not a very organized city. Some cars are right side drive, some are left. There are modern buildings next to broken down Soviet hovels, and very few blocks have a complete sidewalk. There are way too many cars and too few roads, especially during the big Nadam festival that coincided with our stay. Nadam begins with the military marching band in the main square in front of parliament, and then moves on to an opening ceremony in the main stadium a few miles away. Our group got our very own toilet tent on the stadium grounds. All sorts of corporate sponsor groups march in for the opening ceremony. Ride in on wheels, or four legs. Soon the wrestling begins, one of the three Mongolian military sports along with archery and horse racing. The Dam is one big spectacle. Families come out to play. Everyone wears their traditional clothes. At the horse race and everywhere else, Mongolians are very friendly. People camp out for a good spot to watch the end of the 20 mile horse race with 12 year old boys as the jockeys. The Soviets were in control here for almost 70 years. Here's the war memorial that they built. The mural shows Mongolian participation in military victories. Located on a hill overlooking the city. Here's the group having dinner at the only Indian Mexican restaurant in Mongolia. We were seven Australians, two Americans including me, and one Canadian. Two members of our group were in their mid to late 60s. Here's our group with the Bike Asia leader and Mongolian crew, ready to leave Ulaanbaatar for a day and a half in vans, headed toward our cycling start point. Timor, our Mongolian guide, was an endless source of information and entertainment. Three delicious hot meals a day came out of the kitchen truck, which may have invaded Afghanistan 30 years ago. Here's a look at the inside. We camped near this monument to a horse that won the Nadam race a few years ago. More of the unexpected. Our kitchen truck helped pull this other truck through the mud after a rainstorm destroyed a bridge. River levels were high. This was a typical scene. We had only one day with dry feet. Don't try mountain biking if you care about staying clean. About half of the population are herders, living in gurs, we call them yurts, which move at least twice a year as their animals change grazing pastures. They can fold up in about two hours. Hospitality to strangers is at the center of nomadic culture, especially if you give the kids balloons. I gave out the round ones. My friend made balloon animals. You can camp just about anywhere. Expect a visit from a neighbor like the six-year-old who came by unaccompanied except for his ride. This family was showing off the wolf that they had shot the night before, after it had killed one of their horses. People enjoyed having their picture taken, especially if you showed them afterward. Most of our dining spots were pretty scenic, as were our campsites, usually next to a river for bathing and laundry.
Every dinner and some lunches were under this cozy tent for protection from wind or sun. The scenery varied every day. Our path went through a few cities, such as Tsetserleg, which was home to a major Buddhist monastery before the communist era. The town's market area consists of a few hundred retired shipping containers, open for business on one end. Back on the trail, the right path isn't always obvious. The herds might be cattle, yaks, or sheep, but they usually move out of the way when you get close. It seems that no one told Mongolians about switchbacks. The tracks typically go straight up. Mountain passes are a good place to take a little break, including morning tea and snacks provided by the van after a climb. What goes straight up must come straight down. Approaching the old capital of Karkurin, a monument shows the extent of the Mongol Empire under the grandsons of Genghis Khan. We had just finished our cycling and feeling pretty proud of our accomplishment when we met John and Nick. They left exactly a year before from London, about 14,000 miles so far. We finished with a tour of the monastery complex at Karkurin before heading back to Ulaanbaatar. This is a Buddhist prayer wheel. I think you spin it. 